ये निवेदन करते हुए अपनी वाणी को विराम देता हूं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद कलानिधि जी Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to speak on this Jammu and Kashmir Local Bodies Laws Amendment Bill 2024, sir. Sir, I think India is probably the only country where people are discriminated at birth, sir. So for several centuries, people have been discriminated from the time of their birth. You will be able to say that this particular community is not going to be ever growing up in life. These people have to be, they were oppressed to such an extent where we had the horrible crime of untouchability being practiced in this country, sir. So it took several great leaders to be able to bring in a law and our uh, Baba Sahib, our Ambedkar, he brought in a law where he said that untouchability is a crime and it should not be uh, practiced. But despite that, we have to uh, acknowledge that in several parts of India, this crime of untouchability is still in work, sir. So to bring that down, I think the appropriate way is to give empower those people sir to empower those people only we have reservations in uh, elected bodies sir like mlas mps and even in local bodies so we are trying to bring in these kind of empowerment of those people who have been oppressed for several centuries and rajiv gandhi he was the one who wanted to give powers decentralize the powers and give it to the local bodies and he brought in this panchayati raj sir today the, this government is talking about uh, the local bodies in Jammu and Kashmir, where they want to empower the OBCs over there. Sir, I commend this government for that, sir. It is a very great uh, move. But the problem is, for several hundreds of years, these people have been uh, put down. And now, since 1947, for 75 years only, we have this policy of reservation where we have encouraged the downtrodden people to be growing up in life. But in this process, we do not have a clue about what has happened with this reservation policy. For 75 years, we have been giving reservations to several communities. If you look at OBCs, it is not just two or three communities, sir. There are hundreds of communities which fall within that OBC community. And to understand the effects of reservation, unless we have a caste-based census, we will not be able to find out which particular communities have developed and benefited out of this and which particular communities are still being oppressed or still behind where they also have to be brought up in this society, sir. So if you want to recollect, Tamil Nadu was one of the states first to have the highest number of reservations, sir. We have 69% reservation and we feel that proportionate representation, pro proportionate reservation is necessary, sir. So we have to first identify what are all the communities. When we say there is a reservation for OBCs, I feel that we should also have a reservation within the OBCs for se several co communities, sir. And also the government of India has a creamy layer uh, concept, sir. They say that if one generation has developed is a graduate, his son is not eligible. So you have to understand that these communities have been oppressed for hundreds of years. After being, if not thousands of years, sir. For thousands of years they are oppressed and you are saying that one particular family has grown so they, that particular uh, family should not be benefiting out of this. So I would suggest that this government have a creamy layer but you say that those who are not from the creamy layer will be given the first preference and this, that preservation quota should be reserved for those people even if they are from the creamy layer it should be provided to them sir. Sir I also want to know, uh, say that the railways recruitment in the railway recruitment, they to overcome this reservation policy, they have two exams, sir. Bilbari boliye. Sir, these are the po points which are being raised Ji. regarding this. You are talking about empowering OBCs. So in this OBCs, if you want to really have the reservation happening to the people who deserve it, we need to have a caste-based census. So our, my question to this government is, and also, when we talk about Jammu and Kashmir, in 2019, when Jammu and Kashmir was, uh, uh, the three, Article 370 was abrogated, we opposed it, not because Jammu and Kashmir should be treated separately. We feel that India is more of a continent where we have several regions speaking different languages and we have our own cultural identities. Saying that we are one nation is great. We are all a part of 
a nation. If you talk about Tamil Nadu, we will say that we are Tamils first and Indians next. But within Tamil Nadu, if you come, you go to Madurai, the person from Madurai will say, I am a Madurai person first and then only a Tamil. So th these are certain identities which we are living with and that identity should be respected, sir. Okay. When we, we say that Article 370 abrogation, when we opposed it, we are saying that each and every state Gee. in this country, irrespective of whichever state, sir, be it UP, be it Tamil Nadu, be it Kerala, we should have our freedom and independence to run the way the, our people the way we are wanting it, sir. Thank you. You cannot say that we can have one concept of one nation and say that every state in this country should be following that concept, sir. Sir, so I, I would like to end by asking, first, you give back Jammu and Kashmir statehood and then let the people over there decide about this and as a country, what you could do is probably can have a caste-based census, sir. If the state governments do it, Bihar has done that, but that is only called as a survey and it will not be officially acknowledged, sir. So I would like to ask this government whether Gee. a caste-based census is in their agenda or not. Thank you very much.